सो डियर स्टूडेंट्स स्टार्टिंग विद द नेक्स्ट यूनिट यूनिट नंबर सिक्स ए बैक वर्क बेंच इंट्रोडक्शन दिस इज द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट यूनिट एंड इन दिस यूनिट यू विल लर्न अबाउट द फोर लेसन लेसन नंबर वन दैट इज इंट्रोडक्शन पार्ट ऑफ दिस ए बैक डेवलपमेंट एनवायरमेंट हाउ द ए बैप प्रोग्राम डेवलपमेंट इज डन इन द एस ए पी ए बैप सिस्टम इन द लेसन नंबर टू यू विल लर्न अबाउट द ऑर्गेनाइजिंग ए बैप डेवलपमेंट हाउ वी विल ऑर्गेनाइज ऑल ऑफ द ए बैप प्रोग्राम इन द लेसन नंबर थ्री वी विल डेवलप ए सिंपल प्रोग्राम एंड इन द लेसन नंबर फोर वी विल फाइनलाइज दिस डेवलपमेंट सो लेट एस वी स्टार्ट विद द लेसन नंबर वन इंट्रोड्यूसिंग द ए बैप डेवलपमेंट एनवायरमेंट सो इन दिस यू कैन सी दैट दिस इज द क्रॉस क्लाइंट कैपेबिलिटी ऑफ द रिपोजिटरी as we all know the repository what it mean repository that means repository hold all the system development objects so these development objects like such as programs function modules and definition of the database tables that all of these things reside in the repository and this repository is always on the database layer side so you can see that we have three layers that is your database layer application server view and presentation server layer so on the database layer we have the repository which is responsible for holding the all the development objects like your programs function modules and a uh, definition of the database tables so and it is always independent of the client so and thus these objects are accessible from the client so client can access directly to this repository objects the database not only comprises the repository but also contain the applications application data as well as customizing data which are normally the client dependent so this only database do not contain the repository as well as it contains the client specific data like that means it also contain the application data related to a particular client suppose a client is 100 Uh, is storing some data so that data will be also in the database similarly the customizing data will be also hold by this database at the database layer so it has both of the capability that means cross clients can also access as well as client specific data is also stored in the database so if any client or server or user send the request to the abap programs to get this data so they that can be get by the database now come to the next topic that is the structure of the repository now repository is generally subdivided into the number of application components and you can see that their number of application components are mm is there hr is there fi is there and sd is there so an application component can contain the number of several packages so this particular mm package is containing the number of packages like package mm underscore a package mm underscore b package mm underscore c so package is generally consisting of the relevant object relevant object means the object which is categorized into a single entity so like this is mm so the mm is our repository content and this mm repository content contain the number of package related to the mm only and the object of uh, this repository may be your programs and your table definition and your function modules so when we will create a repository object then it must be assigned to a particular package so either we are going to create the abap program either we are going to create the uh, table and either we are going to create the function module so these all of these object must be assigned to a particular package so this is some kind of a structure of a repository now come to the next thing that is repository information system so repository information system generally it contains the number of repository that is already in the sap system so when the user or programmer creates the number of objects like if the user have created the database table so database table will be stored in this database table object and if you are creating the view the view will be stored there the data elements you can store there the structure you can store there so if you want to be find that particular objects into the sap system then you can use the repository information system and you can also search these object into repository information system by uh, going to the path that is repository tool then abap workbench then overview and then information system either you can double click on a particular uh, object then it will display a searching criteria where you can put the search criteria search name of the object and all so 
so by which you can find out the particular object now come to the next topic that is sap application hierarchy the sap application hierarchy is generally used for the application specific search of the repository object so you can see these objects listed in the hierarchical tree structure so this is some kind of a hierarchical tree structure and when you expand the component nodes suppose you are expanding this plus sign with the help of plus sign for example uh, we are going to the fi so fi you will see a display of the, all of the packages that are assigned to a fi for example in the case of fi then fi gl so fi gl is the general ledger accounting so choose select to specify the subtree just select the particular subtree then navigate directly to the repository information system by clicking the particular information system and you can see that uh, this is blue color is showing your application component and uh, this green is showing your packages so particular this is a package and in this packages we have the selected subtree and uh, this is a particular sub selected subtree so this is some kind of a sap application hierarchy now come to the most important slide of this uh, lesson that is ABAP Workbench tools. So this ABAP Workbench includes all of the tools required for creating the repository objects by which you can create the number of objects. So first of all, the first uh, Workbench tool is ABAP Editor. So in which you can uh, uh, create your source code. You can create your programs, ABAP program with the help of ABAP Editor. And you can open this ABAP editor with the help of SC38. Second tool is ABAP dictionary. This ABAP dictionary generally is needed when the database table you are required to create. Then we use ABAP dictionary and you can open this ABAP dictionary with the help of SC11. Come to the next point that is your menu painter and this is another tool which help in designing the user interface. That means you can create the menu bar, send a toolbar application toolbar and function key setting you can also assign with the help of menu painter next is function builder the function builder you can open this function builder using sc37 so with the help of sc37 transition code you can open function builder and by which function builder you can maintain the function modules or you can create the function modules next is class builder the class builder is also a workbench tool by which you can create the global classes and interfaces and you can open this class builder tool with the help of sc24 transition code another is we have uh, this object navigator and the object navigator is used to help to find out the number of objects that has been created by the ABAP developer so that you can find out with the help of object navigator and you can open this object navigator with the help of sc18 Apart from that, we have another particular tool that is called Screen Painter and this Screen Painter help you to configure the screen. You can also create your own screen and I have already told you in the previous video that this each screen has its own screen number and two modules is always associated with this screen and that is called PBU and PI. So we can create number of screen with the help of Screen Painter. Apart from these tools, we have the most important tool that is called Debugger and debugger is generally used to locate the semantic errors in the your program and with the help of this debugger you can find out the semantic errors in your program come to the next slide and that is your screen layout in the object navigator when you will open this object navigator we are talking about this tool that is object navigator which we can open with the help of sc80 so when you will supply a command sc80 into the command field and press enter it will open the object navigator and you can find out some layout like this one and uh, this is your navigation area and you can find out the number of objects in this and for opening the particular object just right click on it and you can open the particular object so this is a tool area when you will double click on it it will show you the object configuration here and with the help of this button you can uh, full screen on and off so you can maximize it and minimize it so this was all about the unit number six and lesson number one if you have any doubt any queries you can also put your queries into the comment section